In 1162, deep in the heart of Asia, a child was born. He was clutching a blood clot, a sign from heaven that he was destined to be a great warrior. Oh my goodness, and it's all like super pumped up units. It's horses, 2,000 horses, 2,000 heavy cavalry, and 1,400 horse archers. Okay, so it looks like somehow these guys just turned into our land. We didn't even have to do anything. And we're just gonna run through all these guys. Look at this. What are you gonna do against a 25,000 army? Like, who do you think you are? Oh no, that's 9,000 men we just killed. Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. Today we will be continuing our Mongolia conquest in Crusader Kings 3, unite all the tribes of Mongolia, become the greatest Khan, and recreate the Mongolian Empire. This is the second part of this series, so if you missed the first video, you can click on the screen now to go watch it, and other than that, this is exactly where we left off. Where we left off, we had just became a kingdom and we were trying to take enough land, I think 25 counties, so that we could get this decision. But the problem is that our player is quite old, so I don't think we'll be able to get it during his life. And what we're planning on doing is waiting until our, until we become our son, who does have some nice traits. And then we can play as him, and then we'll be able to become the greatest Khan. And what that will give us is pretty much all of these lovely units here. And then we'll just be able to steamroll pretty much the entire continent. So as for right now, I definitely have to manage my realm a little bit. You can see it says we only have 700 troops, but that's mainly because we are way over our holding and domain limit. So I'm just going to go ahead and give away some of these lands up here to vassals. And I will also be thinking about who I will be invading next. Okay, so I think we found our next victim. These guys up here in Gorlog look pretty weak. They're fighting in a war that they're losing. And them and their allies only have about 500 men. And I can declare war for a um, duchy. A few pieces of land here at once. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So another war just got declared on me for this county down here. And how does this guy have so many much military? Wow, so he's allied to this big kingdom down here and they're not fighting in any war, so they're probably gonna send their troops to me. I do not love to see that. So I might give this county up. It's not that big a deal. I guess I'll see how it goes a little bit. Okay, so we won this war here. I'll enforce my demands. We get a lot of titles here, a lot of counties. I'm going to have to run these guys down here to defend my own land. So unfortunately for me, I think the right play here is to just surrender this land because I could fight these guys, but I'll just get like heavy casualties. So honestly, I think I'm just going to surrender it. <laughs> I only spend 30 prestige actually, so it's not that big a deal. All right, so whenever you're fighting against a peasant rabble, there's a cool thing you can do actually is instead of raising your whole army what you can do is if you press the button to raise all your forces but then you stop them from gathering right away and that's because the peasant armies are always just levies with normally pretty weak commanders so as an example this army here with only 300 men but those 300 men are all men at arms and knights with a good commander this normally will allow you to always win even though you have a lot less men so you shouldn't waste your time and wait for your armies to gather fully you should just go ahead raise your only men at arms which raise instantly and then go and fight the battle um that's actually a battle tip that i don't think i put in my military um tips video but it's something that i actually do all the time i always cancel my units from raising fully just because the levies give you penalties for your gold when they're raised, and most of the time, you can actually get away with just having all your men at arms fighting against uh, weaker armies. Alright, so we just started a double war against these two guys for both their counties at once, and they're pretty weak, so I think we should be able to win pretty easily. And just like that, we have won both the wars, and we can go ahead and enforce our demands on both of them. And that's another two counties for me. Okay, so I have been just straight up declaring.
declaring tons of wars up here. Decision is available to become the greatest of the cons. So it costs a little bit of gold, a little bit of faith, and we're just gonna do it. I am now the ruler of the universe. So I become an empire here, which is sick. Look at those units, 36,000 we have now. That is really something. And we're making so much gold at this point. Look at this army here. Oh my goodness. And it's all like super pumped up units. It's horses, 2,000 horses, heavy cavalry, and 1,400 horse archers. Oh my goodness. And tons of siege weapons too. This is really crazy. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so they will go away on succession, which is what I thought. But for now, that is utter insanity. They're so strong. I knew we would get a lot of units, but I didn't know there would be so many men at arms in the units too. So now that we are the Mongol Empire and we do have all these units here, which will go away on succession, I think the only option for us skill-wise is to go down the learning tree with the medicinal focus and try to get to this hole of body which will pretty much make our player invincible and hopefully survive an extra long time, which will allow us to take over the whole world. Um... Push the yellow button with his thumb to start the motorcycle. Normally, to invade a kingdom, it would cost 2,000 uh, base prestige. Because we are the Mongol Empire, we are the greatest Khan, we can now do it for 200 only. So we're going to be taking huge portions of lands very, very quickly. And everybody is literally inferior to us. And I think I'm going to start with the Great Liao because they have a holy site here that gives us prowess per level of devotion and clergy opinion, which is all good stuff. So we'll do the Mongol Invasion of Kingdom. And look, so they have 6,000 troops, is what we're coming up against with them and their allies, which before I was a little worried about, but now, if I raise my Mongol hordes, I'll raise two of them only, we should just be able to run in and just completely decimate them. Just look how quick this is, we have 150 siege weapons now, it's only 11, uh, 19, and we have all these units, and they don't even take um supplies like they're always going to be supplied this is actually crazy i didn't know how op being the mongols really was this army is pretty much invincible and i only raised two of them i'm just gonna walk around taking all their land there's literally nothing anybody can do to stop me at this point i just ran over an army i didn't even realize it and i just capture land so quick now oh my goodness okay so it looks like they have an army over here they have they've amassed their whole force their whole fighting force into these four armies let's go to my capital we'll raise one of my mongol hordes and just run in and absolutely destroy them oh they're running they're running for their lives oh they see the horde running towards them and it doesn't even cost me any any gold or prestige to raise these armies i can have 30,000 troops just running around at the same time okay here we go here we go, let's watch this battle. So we've captured all of their troops here on this mountain tile. We don't even need to bring in our other horde. We might as well just move these guys and take some other land somewhere. And just like that, we won our first kingdom war. And we're gonna have so much money and gold that we can just go around and upgrade all of our um, buildings in our land. So then by the time we actually do die, and we lose our units, we should still have a pretty OP territory because we were able to go around and upgrade all of the buildings and everything around our land. I don't even think I took this over here. Who took this? I just have allies going to work? Oh my god, that's insane. Faction created against me. I like you're going to be able to do anything against my 38,000 men. Oh my god, just look at this screen. That is hilarious. All right, I think you know what time it is. I think it's time for the triple war. We'll raise our hordes. Okay, so it looks like somehow these guys just turned into our land. We didn't even have to do anything. Oh, is that one of their abilities? If we declare war, they can white peace and we get their land? Oh, if that's true, that's actually really crazy. So like you would think this normally would be pretty scary all these dudes sitting up here but we got our army coming in hot and we're just gonna run through all these guys look at this what are you gonna do against a 25,000 army like who do you think you are oh man 
This isn't even fair. Alright, so that's one of the wars done. Oh, okay, so I want to read it this time. So these guys have white pieced me. So they've done a white piece with us, which normally would just mean you don't gain or lose anything. But it looks like they completely turn into our land. Wow, that is... I already thought these guys were overpowered, but this is just next level overpowered. Are there any other kingdoms we can make? I think we're going to get most of our gold just by creating kingdoms. I mean, we're going to be able to get most of our prestige to keep doing Vongol invasions by creating kingdoms that we invade. Okay, and that's the war completed. So that's another kingdom we just got. Look at that. Now we are starting to look like the real Mongols here. I'm definitely going to have to take some time and get rid of some of these lands at some point but i'm not looking forward to that right now i'm having just way too much fun invading everybody oh i feel like it might be time to invade kumania they have 11,000 troops which is a lot but it is nothing in comparison to me of course i can't tell you how satisfying it is watching three super powerful armies just take land this quickly like look at this look how fast these guys take territory it's actually amazing all right so here comes a pretty big battle we got nine thousand troops look at this bunch of armies against my three mongol hordes let's see what happens so it looks like pure domination and i don't even have my eleven thousand troops in there yet let's take a look oh no that's nine thousand men we just killed 42 people survived only. It appears like we have a peasant rabble here, which honestly might be one of the stupidest things I've ever seen. And it's a peasant rabble of like 400 people. Like, who do you think you are? Do you see my army? So we have captured the kingdom of uh, the Great Liao that was down here, and now we are looking pretty big. I gotta do some more realm management again because my holdings are getting out of hand, but we are steamrolling everybody. I think next are gonna be these guys up here. So here's a little tip for you guys. If you are playing the same type of game as me, as the Mongols, or you're just playing as anybody and you, you're taking huge amounts of lands at once, one way you can easily deal with getting rid of your domains is so I'll find somewhere where I have a bunch of domains, like right here, check the duchy, and then you grant this duchy to somebody. I'm really not being picky, I'll just choose somebody um, who is my religion, my culture, whatever, and then you scroll down to where you find these counties and make sure you grant them the actual duchy. And just like that, I'm getting rid of around three to like seven domains per time, like I did it already with these ones here. So for an example, I see I got a lot of land here. I check which are the what are the duchies in this area. So for an example, this one here has like five lands. Grant two good people. I'll just grant it to this guy down here. Scroll down until you find all the um, counties here. Click on the duchy and grant it away. And I'm always granting it to new people instead of giving it to uh, guys in my territory that already have land just to... Uh, make sure nobody gets too strong and doing it this way will also help make sure that they'll still have a good opinion of you because they'll control their whole duchy and you won't have any crisscross between your um, your vassals which is very helpful always and just like that we're back down to 15 so not too bad and we have taken this lovely kingdom to our north and we get all of their land look at us so I think we're probably the biggest empire in the game. These guys might have a little bit more land than us, but they only have 15,000 troops, so nowhere near us in terms of strength. One thing that is very important to note if you're trying to do this Mongol game, when you become the Great Khan, these military guys here, they don't replenish. As you can see, you're getting zero per month. Once they die, they die, so you should kind of be careful when you're using them. But we're taking so much land at this point that our other army is just, our levies is going up like crazy. We have 35,000 levies now. 
Um, we have so much prestige that we should probably just be buying tons of um, these units here. Because we have just have so much prestige coming through now and money too. It's, we do need to get our way into mainland China to match the Mongols and Middle East. And we even have to take this land here too. And our player is getting up there in age. Not good. He's 63. But we are almost down here to the whole of body. So I think we should be able to get that. Which should get us at least into like 80 something I'm hoping. So... One of my sons, my son and heir actually, is getting destroyed by peasants right now. If we have a look at him, you can see he's losing a peasant war. So I decided to go in and help him out. He looked like he needed some help. And the problem is, I went over here and I raised a local army. And since all men-at-arms always get raised whenever you you raise your army, I literally have all my, my Mongol hordes. You can see coming in here and that's really not what i want i wish i had an option where you could just raise certain you could just like choose how much how many men you wanted to raise instead of having to raise all your men at arms always because i don't think i need ten thousand men just to stop this, this 600 men army of peasants here like i don't think it's fully necessary but i mean now that i did it i guess we just watch how it plays out which should be pretty fun doesn't look like it's going to end well for them and you can see they actually managed to kill 16 men which you got to give it to the peasants that's impressive but i think this is actually where i'm going to end this episode today we we have made some good territory over here in the north we took all this land the next thing that we're gonna have to focus on is taking this china region here which might be hard because there's a lot of split up areas and then we're gonna have to have a big battle with the seljuk empire and take a little bit of land here all the way up to Europe if we want to become the true Mongols. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We made a lot of progress here towards the end. And let me know if you want me to continue and keep taking land here. I'm having a lot of fun, honestly. I've never done a Mongol game before, so I didn't know how powerful the Mongol horde would be. And I, I find it very enjoyable just to steamroll people with these uh, with this huge army. So yeah, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.